Well, thank you very much for inviting me along uh, today. Uh, I think I'd win the prize for the most convoluted uh, title of, of the afternoon. Uh, but in essence, what I'm going to talk about is a practical example, I think, of a sector, which is the energy sector, uh, and a region, which is the West Midlands, which I have an engagement in, which I'll, I'll come back to in a minute. Uh, and how that, how the, the industrial strategy and Brexit is having some impact <coughs> on what we're trying to do. Um, I'm, I'm also in a happy position, possibly, of, of not being an academic. So some of the things I say may be um, more or less um, in tune with, with what the academic world or, or the current of thought is, is um, where the current of thought is, is taking people. But um, I, I can only say where I come from. So I'm going to speak very briefly about. What, what my perspective is, so you understand where, where I'm coming from. Uh, I'll then talk a bit about what is special about energy. I think we all probably think our sectors are special, but energy in particular, I think, has some characteristics which make it particularly, the, the challenges and opportunities we're currently facing particularly uh, interesting, if you like, in the, in the current context, and particularly in the West Midlands, so I'll touch on that. Uh, and then what's Brexit uh, done for us? Uh, what are the challenges? Uh, and as I say in the title, I, I am a reluctant optimist. I think the reluctancy comes from age. The optimism, um, I hope, well, I, without the optimism, I wouldn't be running a small business uh, in the UK at the moment, in fact. Uh, and I am a practitioner, so I have to spend most of my time keeping that business alive. So as Nigel says, I've been running NCRAF for 14 years. Our, our area is energy and buildings. That's, that's what we, we generally work in, uh, in innovative areas. Uh, and we work on the demand side. So we, we generally work with people who have buildings who want to do new things with them. And I've spent 14 years doing that, and I spent 15 years in, in a completely different world with a completely different perspective, which was, was large, large corporations. Uh, for the last year and a half nearly now, I've been the director of Greater Birmingham Study Hall LEP. Um, and I'm not going to try and explain what LEPs do, um, local enterprise, inward investment, that kind of thing. I look after innovation, so I'm, I'm particularly interested in um, driving innovation and productivity through um, SMEs and, and companies in the Greater Birmingham and Surrey Hall area. Within that brief, uh, I chair an organisation called Energy Capital, which is in fact uh, covers all three local enterprise partnerships for the West Midlands, so Coventry and Warwickshire, where we are at the moment, uh, Black Country and Greater Birmingham and Solihull. And I'll talk very briefly about what that organisation is and why it exists, what it's trying to do. Um, from a personal perspective, um, I, I thought it's, it's worth just saying I'm strongly pro-EU, uh, still am. I've worked for the EU over the last um, 10 years on, on and off, so I'm familiar with how they work. Um, so I'm, not, I, I'm, I'm dealing with Brexit um, from that perspective uh, originally. I'm strongly pro-industrial strategy. <laughs> I was talking to Jonathan about uh, I was, uh, I'm, I'm either old or young enough, old enough probably. I was educated at the tail end of the 1970s, early 1980s, so when it was still a topic people thought was uh, worth educating people in. Uh, and I'm also strongly pro-place and people, so you don't run a small business for uh, more than a decade in a region without actually becoming very embedded and... Um, engaged in that re region, despite the fact Encraft's worked in America, Europe, we, we work very broadly, although, although mostly across the UK. So that's, that's my set of perspectives. Just to set the energy context, first of all, so why is energy special? <laughs> it is a massive market, and, and the 2.7 trillion figure there, which comes from the International Energy Agency, is really about energy systems and technologies. That's not energy you and I buy, that's about the technologies and the infrastructure that gets the energy to you. So that's a, a massive uh, opportunity for, for any uh, in industry. But the key thing is really that's changing in a really fundamental way at the moment. So low-cost IT is, is fundamentally changing the way the energy sector can work and storage and renewables completely changing how countries have to think about running their energy systems. So that creates a lot of economic opportunities, a lot of business opportunities for people, fundamentally around managing energy systems more efficiently because you can manage them at a much higher level of granularity. I'm not going to go into that in any more detail, but, but that creates opportunities for entrepreneurs, innovators, people like like Tesla, Google, etc. Uh, everyone needs energy. The demand is kind of there and it's not going to go away. So it's, it's a market you know you can serve. And this really interesting set of convergences going on, which we'll all um, be aware of, between traditional sectors. And I think this is an issue for industrial strategy and Whitehall when it starts to think about automotive deals, energy deals, etc. The world that I'm in, energy, transport, construction, digital sectors are all now merging together. And companies are taking advantage of that. So the, the picture there, you've got the Google Nest, so that's an IT firm. 
putting thermostats in houses, so they're getting involved in the energy sector and arguably the construction sector, the control of buildings. That's the Jaguar uh, I-PACE electric vehicle they'll be launching next year. So that's the automotive sector beginning to ask serious questions of the energy sector. How are you going to... Um, it, it, by 2026, half of the, the vehicles in the UK will be electric, is the prediction, or hybrid. Uh, that's a massive drain on, on the grid in terms of charging them all at 6 o'clock at night when people come home. It's also an opportunity in terms of grid balancing. It changes the dynamics of the electricity system fundamentally. Uh, and it was announced, I think, this month even, that Engie, which is one of the world's biggest energy companies, uh, owned, it's Gast Gast de France, it's a French, French company, GDF Suez, um, bought a UK regeneration construction company called Keepmote for £330 million. So that's an energy company going into construction. So the sector boundaries are changing, the rules of the game are changing uh, in a massive, massive market. Real, real opportunities for, for lots of businesses. And there's a fantastic story in the West Midlands uh, in this area. So the West Midlands for this purpose, I, I'm Coventry and Warwickshire, the yellow bit of that picture, Greater Birmingham and Solihull, which is the blue bit in the middle, and the black country, which is the red bit on the earth. And this is broadly the area covered by our new mayor, West Midlands Combined Authority. So I, I, I'm really going to try and avoid getting drawn into how it's all organised, but it all does actually make sense. <laughs> um, and, and, and our story is particularly exciting and interesting for energy um, because we've got a whole range of things coming together. Devolved powers, so a mayor who has the ability to make new things happen in slightly new ways, and politics and political support is really uh, fundamental to energy market development, which I'm going to come back to. Fantastic manufacturing heritage, which I, I probably don't need to go into, but of different nature, actually. The black country still got a lot of little, little foundries and small businesses, very flexible uh, manufacturing, uh, automotive supply chain as well, aerospace. Um, clearly, this part of the world, transport technologies, and Warwick, Warwick's uh, expertise in and supporting uh, Jaguar Land Rover and all of the Formula One R&D, etc. as well. Uh, energy infrastructure, there's a load of energy companies based around here because it's traditionally national grid, obviously in Warwick. Um, traditionally, that there's the centre of UK electricity and gas networks and industry. So massive skills and, and um, capabilities around that. And on the demand side, and the demand side is something I'm going to focus on particularly, a really interesting market with really significant opportunities. So £10 billion a year spent on energy in, in this region. That's always going to be spent, or broadly always going to be spent. So can it be spent in new ways? Opportunities there. £2.5 billion spent on new energy infrastructure every year in this region. Uh, £10 billion of new housing planned in the next 10 years. And High Speed 2, which is another £50 billion investment, but two terminals uh, in Solihull and Birmingham. So massive infrastructure investment, massive market opportunities from uh, a business uh, perspective. And of course, from an inward investment perspective and people wanting to come here, attractive place to live as well. Leamington Spa, Warwick, Warwickshire. We've got that, that wonderful diversity. So really interesting uh, story. A strong sense of place I put on there, very different sense of place. So people in Coventry relate very strongly to Coventry. Uh, people in the black country relate, relate very strongly to the black country and people in Birmingham relate to Birmingham and even bits of Birmingham, bits of the black country. Uh, and I think that's important as well because they're ultimately the customers for any uh, innovation. The, the perspective I come from is that, that all this industrial strategy, that it, it focuses too much on the supply side really. Um, if, if we want really to offer opportunities to uh, commercialise innovation and build industrial strength in the UK, We've got to have markets that accept the innovations and provide a context in which companies can, can grow. We've got a lousy track record in this in, in a lot of areas, which is an old story, but most recently I came across Graphene, which you know, is, is, is a flagship UK Manchester development. More patents in the US and China than the UK, more commercial opportunities already being taken advantage of out, out there. Um, energy... Um, is a different sort of market from that. That's, a, a, that's just a, a generic opportunity of innovation. But, but energy is a, is a market in which th there's a real opportunity to create a market through political reg regulations, through infrastructure and people. So if you want to um, sell hydrogen-powered vehicles, you need a hydrogen infrastructure. If you want to, to, to sell uh, elect um, electric vehicles, you need electrical infrastructure. Uh, if you want to sell... Um, energy efficiency technologies for housing. You need people to really buy into that and want to do that. You can have as many technologists as you like pushing inno innovations into the market unless you've got those people wanting those innovations and infrastructure and regulations that support them, it's going nowhere. Um, it's really 
difficult to imagine um, the UK as, or the country as a whole putting in place new regulations, new infrastructure uh, and getting everyone mobilised around new energy technologies uh, in the kind of ways that are needed to create industrial structures. But it is possible to imagine that being done at a regional level and that's kind of the essence of what we're trying to do through energy capital. So the idea is a place, a place meaning a region or sub-region, is uh, a geographically bounded area which is big enough if it's got 10 billion pounds worth of demand for energy or 12 and a half billion if you include the energy systems to um, coordinate those things regulations infrastructure to mobilize the people to demand novel energy technologies in, a, in a, a meaningful way and that's enough to build an industrial cluster on the back of so what we're trying to do through energy capital is create that um, sweet spot, if, if you like, of demand, which, which allows competition, new technologies to come in, but within a framework set by the local people and the local democratic institutions. Um, I haven't necessarily explained that as clearly as I wished, but we can maybe come back to it in the questions and answers um, later on. But that's, that's the basic essence of what we're trying to do through the Local Enterprise Partnership and, and the Combined Authority at the moment. So that would happen anyway, I think. <laughs> Um, and the question for, for this uh, meeting is, is, what has Brexit changed? I think it's making the, the trend towards regional devolution much stronger, which is a good thing. That's helpful in the context of what I've just been talking about, because what I've been talking about requires the mayors, the urban mayors, to say, yeah, I'm prepared to pick up energy, I'm prepared to set a context for um, new technologies to be uh, commercialised in my area. I think there is a recognition that the world is not just global, that people matter, place matters, customers matter, <laughs> effectively. And so we're going to have potential for, for much greater local control over the kind of infrastructure that will support uh, vibrant energy markets. Um, Jonathan talked about industrial strategy. Uh, it's a good thing for me that industrial strategies emerged as a valid concept. I think we are currently at the clearly need an industrial strategy because we've let down the, the people of the north of England and so on who, who, who valued their industries and they've therefore voted for something not particularly sensible <laughs> uh, very broadly. Um, so there's an understanding that we need that. I'm not sure that Whitehall's yet got how to do that uh, and to reconcile that with um, you know, the, the economic um, stream of thought and, and um, uh, the global markets that we know are out there. So I think we've got to find new ways of, of tackling that, which is an opportunity uh, for everyone, really. I think from a personal and a small business perspective, I do have to make the point everything is much tougher, at least in the short term. So I have lost staff, British staff, who've emigrated to Europe uh, within months of the vote. Uh, funding's harder to get. Collaboration is harder to do. The consensus direction of travel is gone. We've got uncertainty, and that is really damaging confidence in business at the moment. It is very, very tough. Um, on the positive side, um, from an energy sector perspective, it may be easier to create that environment and flex regulations in the longer term because we may have to look less to Europe, but um, that's no, by no means certain because I think we may still want to do quite a lot of trading in that direction. There are still substantial challenges in achieving the kind of success that I think we, we potentially can. So we're struggling to get, um, struggling is, is too strong a word, we, we have a clear vision I think through energy capital of what we could potentially do in this region with energy uh, particularly. There's lots of other things we're doing in the region I should say, life sciences, uh, other areas, automotive. Um, but uh, there's much talk of the Midlands engine, it was mentioned in this, this topic, that doesn't really mean much to the people of the Midlands and I speak as someone who was born and brought up in the East Midlands and now lives in the West Midlands, so you've got to relate to viable markets and, and places people recognise and you've got to relate to viable political entities and we've got a mayor and the East Midlands doesn't have any kind of organisation, so it's not helpful actually for Whitehall to relate to the Midlands engine. I think there's some fundamental challenges around knowledge markets being global, so if I was an academic I would be competing in a global market for my expertise and knowledge. Um, the local market, uh, energy markets are increasingly local, uh, the needs of the local market may not match where I'm at and then you've got a disconnect and you've got the government investing in R&D uh, in fantastic universities and fantastic academics and a local sector which can't relate to that at all. And in construction and energy that is a particularly difficult uh, issue. In, in Birmingham about 85% I think is the figure and I might, might not be quite right, 85% of businesses just don't innovate at all. They don't export, they just do what they've done sometimes for hundreds of years. <laughs> um, 
and they have a whole set of problems which the academic world doesn't engage with at all. It can only say to them, you need to be doing manufacturing 4.0 or whatever, which is such a massive leap. You know, it's, it's very, very tough. Is there not a more incremental path? Um, the industrial strategy speaks of sector deals with a strong place element, but there's no real sense of how to do that. Okay. Um, and I think the industrial strategy is very, very weak, and the UK is very weak in general on the dynamics and models of change. So th there's a vision of the future out there, but how do we get there, and do we understand how we're going to get there, and can we optimise the path and not just the destination? Um, but I am an optimist, so I think the good things we've got going on here, we've got greater alignment of political power with emerging market opportunities, which I tried to articulate, uh, which gives us greater chance of building businesses which can compete globally. We've got the opportunity that in energy in the West Midlands and other sectors as well. Um, I think universities need to find better ways to work with industry in the kind of way I've, I've described. I think Warwick and Birmingham University are both doing great things in that area and there's some really good models. And actually Warwick Manufacturing Group and JLR are quite a good model that if we could re replicate in other sectors, we'd be doing very well. Brexit is a, is a tragedy. I, you know, I, I, I compare it to personal experience trying to run a small business. Anyone who tries to do anything in the world knows they have to collaborate and we have just opted out of collaboration with all our uh, partners in Europe. I think if we get this right, hopefully we can re rebase our economy, uh, a stronger regional economic base, we'll regain our confidence and we will be back in the EU maybe before I, I die, but you never know. Okay, thank you very much.